Hello and welcome to Pet Talk with me, Mr. Pet Brawl. In this episode, we're going to start looking at how we can use physics to see inside your body. By the end of this episode, you should be able to tell me what we use x-rays in hospitals for, why x-rays are dangerous, and what can we say about the absorption of x-rays as they pass through our bodies. So we've all seen images like this one before and we know that they're produced by x-rays and we know that they can be useful in showing us broken bones. This is an x-ray of someone's hand um, and that's the state of it after they were holding a firework when it went off and you can see what it's done to the bones in their hand here. Okay, But what we need to actually understand is how and why these images are produced. So firstly, what is an x-ray? Well, you should remember from your P1 work, the x-rays that we've got just here are actually electromagnetic waves uh, that make up a particular region of the electromagnetic spectrum that you see here. We can find them between ultraviolet or UV rays and gamma rays up here, okay, at the short wavelength end of the spectrum. Now, we can produce x-rays um, if we take a beam of fast-moving electrons and we fire it at a tungsten target, like the one we've got down here, inside a vacuum tube. What this does is cause the atoms of the target to start to emit energy as x-rays. And they are emitted in all directions, but they come out through this filtered hole here. And these ones can now be used, the x-rays being given out by this x-ray tube, can now be used to produce my x-ray photograph, or the correct word for that is a radiograph. So I can produce x-rays but what's actually going to detect them for me? Well the traditional technique would be to place a piece of photographic film like the one I've got here inside a light proof um, cassette. It's just like a box where no visible light can get in so none of this visible light can expose my photographic film. But X-rays aren't visible light and they have got a higher penetrating power. So when I start to um, shine my X-rays from my X-ray tube onto my cassette, they can penetrate through that material and they can penetrate and they can start to expose parts of that film. And wherever the X-rays come into contact with the film, they start to produce a uh, darker region on the film. Nowadays, though, it's more common to replace the film with a flat panel detector, which actually contains something called a CCD, or a charge-coupled device. And what happens is sensors in the CCD uh, convert x-rays into little flashes of visible light, which then themselves create electrical signals that are converted into a digital image by a computer. Okay, This is exactly the same thing that happens inside your digital camera. You've got a CCD in there that detects the visible light coming in through the lens. Well, in this case, the x-rays themselves just produce the visible light, which then creates the image. So we can now use our x-rays to create an image on a film or a CCD. How do we actually use them in hospitals? Well, the radiographs used in medical imaging rely on the different ways that x-rays are absorbed by different tissues in our bodies. Um, the body part to be x-rayed, so in this case it's an arm that I think might have a broken bone inside of it, that's placed between my um, x-ray tube and my film or my CCD, my detector over here. Okay. Now, when the x-rays are uh, turned on, the x-rays can easily penetrate through the soft tissues of the body, such as the skin and the fat and the muscle. Wherever there's no bone, the uh, x-rays are going to penetrate through, okay, and they're going to reach the film and they're going to darken it like we saw before. However, denser materials in the body like bone or teeth or metal are not going to let those x-rays penetrate through. They are going to stop and absorb those x-rays and they're going to leave regions of the film unexposed. So what I'm going to start to get on my film is wherever the x-rays are reaching the film it's going to start to darken up a bit like this on here so we can see the x-rays it's going dark where the x-rays reach it but where the denser materials are the x-rays are stopped and so I get a white area being left. So eventually what I'm going to do is my, uh, you know, brilliant artistry is just going to show us there. that what I'm going to get eventually is a image produced of the um, thing that I'm x-raying. With these areas of the film darkened because the x-rays have exposed them. And this area of the film left the bright white because that has not been exposed. 
So it's actually possible to say that a radiograph is like a negative photo. The white areas of the um, bones and this very dense metal handle, this knife stuck in someone's head here, are the bits of the film that the x-ray didn't reach, whereas the dark areas obviously uh, correspond to a gap or a fracture in a bone or a cavity that might be in a tooth in a dental x-ray. So x-ray is really useful, but also really dangerous. And you might remember from our work in P2 on ionizing radiation that x-rays are actually a type of ionizing radiation. So the energy in x-ray can knock the electrons out of atoms and produce ions, ionized materials there. OK, so high doses of um, x-rays can kill cells and even small doses can damage DNA and cause mutations. OK, so therefore workers who work with x-rays in radiology departments in hospitals and that sort of thing, they have to limit their exposure and they have to wear one of those film badges that we've talked about before to indicate the level of exposure to ionizing x-rays that they've had. One final use of x-rays actually relies on this dangerous ionizing power as x-rays can actually be used to kill cancerous tissue. Now I've given this poor guy here uh, a tumour inside of him there. Uh, I've drawn that on there to indicate it in red. Okay, uh, what we're going to do is get rid of that tumour using x-ray therapy. So what the um, two technicians have done there for him is they've placed this container with thick metal plates inside of it on top of his body and those thick metal plates have just got a very narrow gap between them there okay so what it's possible to do using this is expose the patient to x-rays so from this x-ray emitter there's x-rays coming out but they're being absorbed by those dense metal plates there um, but x-rays are passing through that very narrow gap and you know they're passing through those tumor cells there so what it's possible to do is expose only specific cells to the x-rays thereby killing these cells but keeping the surrounding tissue all of the stuff that we don't want to get ionized over here and over here okay that is unharmed and this is known as x-ray therapy using x-rays to actually kill off tumor cells so that's everything we need to know about how and why x-rays are used to create images in hospitals. Any problems with that, don't hesitate to tweet me at Mr. Pepperell or email me and I'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for stopping by.